Welcome back to the New York State Department of Health Clinical Education Initiatives Building Blocks for Trans and Gender Diverse Care series. I'm Erica Bostic, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm an adolescent medicine physician and faculty for the CEI Sexual Health Center of Excellence. And I'm Kai, my pronouns are he and him, and I'm a clinical educator for CEI. All right, so if you're watching these videos in order, you've just finished performing an environmental scan. As part of that, you briefly touched on the personnel involved in your clinic space. In this video, we're going to take a closer look. That's right. People are important. The way a patient is treated by all members of your healthcare team is going to have a big impact on whether they trust you, take your medical advice, and return for further care. So who makes up your healthcare team? Probably a lot more folks than you might think. We're not just talking about the starters or even just the players. We're talking about the managers and the back office and the fans. It's a big club. Let's start with the clinic personnel. The first face a patient may see is the receptionist or check-in staff. This is the time to use gender inclusive language or gender neutral language, like y'all or folks. And also take a closer look at the forms that you're providing patients to be sure that there's a space for affirmed name, affirmed pronouns, things like that. Next, consider the medical assistants, LPNs or RNs who help you by calling patients back from the waiting room and putting them into an exam room. Surprisingly, there are a lot of different ways that you could call a patient back when they're in the waiting room. You could call their first name, but you'd run the risk of using a legal name or dead name that they no longer use. So instead, consider using their last name and maybe the person that they're there to see. Next, maybe a nurse who possibly is taking the first pass at history, including medications. This may include gender affirming hormones, which would be something to take note of and pass on to the provider. You may perhaps have a reaction to the medication not matching the person sitting in front of you. Be mindful of this because that reaction may come off as negative. Next, when you're considering all the people on your healthcare team, make sure you're thinking about the people who help you with billing, coding, and getting prior authorization from insurance companies. We'd all love to live in a world where none of this could have an impact on a patient's care, but we know that these people are critically important in making sure that our patients get the care that they need. This may be particularly true for transgender and non-binary people who want to access preventive health care, affirming hormones, and gender-affirming surgeries. It's really important that these people actually understand the kind of care that a trans person might be looking to get and that they understand how to communicate these procedures or medications and why they are required to insurance companies. Office manager. This person makes a lot of decisions involving staff recruitment, policies and procedures, workflow, and also expectations with accountability. This is a good person to involve in creating a gender-affirming healthcare space. Of course, you want to think about the social workers and care managers on your team as well. These folks tend to be expert in the resources that are available in your local community and in connecting your patients to the resources that they need. As we've talked about in other videos in this series, transgender and non-binary folks are dealing with a lot of minority stress, which might manifest as obstacles in the way of stable housing and employment. And so having social workers and care managers who can help your transgender and non-binary patients get access to trans-affirming services can be a huge benefit to your healthcare team overall. Lab personnel. Some tests or specimen sources are associated with a person's sex assigned at birth, which may differ than their gender documented in the system. For example, a pap smear specimen coming from a person who has a documented gender marker as male. It will be important for lab staff to be aware of this. Also included on your healthcare team are the people who help make your schedule. If a patient calls with a low voice, you want to make sure that your scheduler isn't going to automatically assume that person's gender identity just based on the pitch of their voice. You want to have schedulers who can call patients and receive call from, calls from patients and have an open mind and treat everyone with respect. Hospital administrators, or SUITs. To enact systemic change, we often need the bigwigs on board. Everything we know about quality assurance and practicing good, safe medicine involves consistency in the form of policies and guidelines. When this doesn't happen, when there's inconsistency, that leads to confusion amongst patients and providers, which can also compromise safety and quality. Sometimes a larger institution may need to bring in a consultant 
to help establish affirming guidelines and policies and train staff in order to provide the best, most consistent care. As we talked about when we did our environmental scan, we talked about the need to look at our policies and procedures and decide what care we are willing to provide in our clinic based on our scope of practice and what kinds of care we need our colleagues in other subspecialties to help us with. And so of course, if you're going to refer to another consulting physician or provider, you want to make sure ahead of time that that provider is trans-affirming. And so you need to think about them as being part of your healthcare team, and it is part of your responsibility to make sure that they will take good, quality, and affirming care of your trans and non-binary patients before you refer to them. Let's talk specifically about mental health care providers. As you recall, we made clear that being trans is not a mental health condition. The role of collaborating with a mental health care provider is not to diagnose a mental disorder or act as a gatekeeper, though this does happen. Some practices, depending on the age and or psychiatric comorbidities of a patient, may require a letter in support of starting hormones from a mental health provider. The intention here should be a partnership that sets the person up for a safe, successful, and sustainable transition. And of course, no healthcare team would be complete without providers and not just you. All the partners in your practice, all the trainees that you are educating, all of your colleagues, if you are not all on the same page, this can lead to breakdowns in communication and issues for your patient. And we could probably go on longer with other people involved in today's ever-expanding healthcare system, but you get the point. Healthcare teams today are big and getting bigger, and each person that represents your team is making an impact on patients, for better or for worse. Once you've gotten a headcount of all the various professionals that make up your healthcare team, it's up to you to make sure that all of these people are trained to take the best care of your patients. You also want to hire intentionally, which means that you're hiring people who are gender affirming or people who identify as transgender and or non-binary so that your patients have people in your office that look like them and that they can relate to. You also need to make sure everyone on this big healthcare team is on the same page. Only by doing so can you ensure that your gender diverse patients will have a positive experience. Want to learn more? Stay tuned for our next videos.